Okay, well we finished the first uh, section of the class looking at the Torah, the law, uh, Genesis through Deuteronomy. Now we're on to the, the next section of the Old Testament uh, that we call the historical books. Uh, so, and this section is a little longer than the first section. The first section we studied five books. Uh, here we have uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, depending on how you're counting. Uh, so, uh, this this test, actually, the second test is usually a little more difficult than the first test. Uh, so, the historical books uh, in the English order uh, we call uh, the, are the books of Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First, Second Samuel, uh, First, Second Kings, First, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Uh, so the, uh, we're, we're going to start into Joshua today. Uh, and so the Hebrew order of the, of the scripture, um, which we call the, the Old Testament in Hebrew, we call it the Tanakh, uh, which stands for Torah, Navim, and Ketuvim. So the Torah is the law, the Navim is the prophets, and the Ketuvim is the writings. Well, where these historical books fit in, uh, uh, many of them fit into the prophets. So uh, Joshua, Judges, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, uh, are, they, they, these are books uh, that fit in in the prophets. Um, but uh, Ruth and First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, these are uh, the, in the writings. So the historical book section is these books are are in both. Some are in the Navim, some are in the Ketuvim. Some some are prophets, some are writings. Um, but so what is history? As we move in this section, we've already, a lot of the Torah actually had history in it. Like Genesis had the prehistory, but then also the ancestor, history of the ancestors, uh, the history of the Exodus, the history of the time in the wilderness. So these narratives, you could call them history also. Uh, but but what is, is, as we move into the historical books, what the, what is the purpose of remembering history? Uh, and so since we're not in class, um, I guess I can't invite participation. Uh, I usually get, so, so, but I want you to think about it. Take a moment. What's the purpose of remembering history? Try to write something. I often have, have students write things like, oh, so you don't repeat the same mistakes again. Uh, so, 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 so you can see how we fit into the, the, the overall flow. Like if you study history, you can see where we've been and maybe that gives us an idea of where we're going. I, I think those are both good things like, like learning from the past uh, so that, that you don't do the same things again or, or so that you can learn from it and do the same things again. Uh, I guess those are some reasons for learning about history. I think what, when we're thinking about the study of history, uh, we're choosing to uh, history. The, the process of history is is a process of choosing what to remember. Uh, you like we can choose to remember some things and choose to forget other things. And history is our intentional choosing to remember certain things. And so as you as we choose to emphasize and remember and uh, dwell on uh, s certain events. Uh, this is showing us something about who we are and what we value. So history is ultimately then, if, if it's, it's an expression of what we value, then history is an act of worship. Uh, as as we do history, it, it's a it's an act that in which we're either honoring what is true, or it is an act of idolatry in which we're just trying to build up our own self and our own. Uh, our own reputation and per, but, but then putting out some uh, falsehoods. Um, so hi history can be a celebration of what God's done in the past or it can be an exaltation of oneself, one's own nature, nation or one's own culture. Uh, so I, I think we can see like sometimes you'll hear people say that they're, they're 
like that they just want an objective history. I just want to know the facts. Anytime that you're looking at history objectively, remember you're still choosing which facts to focus on. There's, so there's still a choice of, of what to pay attention to and what, what to not pay attention to. And that tells you something about, about what you value. Um, and so, so, so in that sense, there's no neutral history. That, that all history is, is a, a, an action of expression of, of our, our values. It, it's, it's a political act, um, but it's also a theological act. And, and it's, so now I'm not saying that there's not truth in history. Actually, it's, it's more that the truth of history as we, we remember the past and what we, we share about that, it's also saying something about who we are. And so how we retell history shows, shows our, our hearts. And, and so, so when you're revising history, look at why, what are you saying uh, by, by doing that. And so, so the Bible's point of view in history, it might surprise you. Uh, you might find, like as we look at, I mean, we've already seen like Jacob his life. Uh, he, he deceived his brother and his father, but he's one of the patriarchs. Uh, most of the people in the Bible, jo jo Joseph was a pretty good one, but uh, the most of the people we studied so far, you see they had some significant character flaws. Well, the, the history, uh, this historical section, it's, it's not showing God's people in the best of light uh, here. Uh, that it's not covering over humanity's flaws. Um, it uh, the historical books uh, show still so God's covenant promise to Abraham how God is faithful to keep that promise uh, he, he's he's faithful to his word all throughout uh, but we see the that Israel e even as uh, and, and God's people are uh, idolatrous and unfaithful and uh, he, he as he brings them into the promised land they quickly forget uh, him and they turn to idolatry uh, and then God is, brings a, a, a judgment upon his people um, so why would a nation make that kind of story put at, at the center of their historical retelling well it's, it's because it's an act of worship not trying to honor themselves or their own nation uh, but honoring God so uh, I do want you to see that the Bible can be put into, I mean, it, it, it is, it, it connects with uh, history in real time, uh, real places. Uh, so what we've read so far in, in Genesis tells the story of the patriarchs, and that's happening in about the Middle Bronze Age. So the time of Abraham is about 2000 BC. Actually, it's a real easy to remember some of the dates of the, of the Bible. If, if you remember, 2000 BC is Abraham, and 1000 BC is David, and zero is Jesus. Uh, then, then that helps you like have a, a simple, broad framework uh, there. Um, so uh, the, the Exodus. So, so the patriarchs are about 2000 uh, BC, uh, in a, a little bit after in that area. Uh, then uh, the the Exodus occurs sometime during the New Kingdom period of Egypt uh, with Pharaoh, maybe under Pharaoh Amenhotep or Pharaoh Ramses. There's two different uh, uh, theories about the time of the Exodus, uh, but they're not that far apart from each other in date. So, so we can uh, look, see, okay, that's when Moses and c comes out of uh, Egypt. It's during the New Kingdom period. Um, and so the Iron Age is uh, is roughly the time that uh, the the hi history section takes place. So so the time of that we're talking about now, from Joshua through Esther, is is from 1200 BC to 586 BC, and that's taking place during the Iron Age uh, of human history. Um, so we're we're going to learn about. Uh, well, the, the conquest and entry into the promised land, uh, then uh, how the uh, Israel goes through, through a time, period of, of confusion, but then the rise of the monarchy. Uh, to, and King David is about 1,000, is 900 something B BC, but I just remember 1,000. That makes it a nice round number. Uh, 
and, and so that's and then uh, so Saul, David, and Solomon are the the kings when Israel's at, at the the the. the is united uh, but then then it's divided and we'll get into the period of the divided kingdom uh, and then God brings two nations in, to judge uh, Israel and in the northern kingdom and and uh, and Judah which is the south. Israel gets divided into two parts Israel and Judah and God brings judgment on Israel but through the Assyrians and then and then he brings a more complete judgment uh, in which Jerusalem is destroyed, uh, and and that's at the hands of the the Babylonians, who are also called the Chaldeans. Uh, and so, the the, the the Chaldean Empire is six twenty six to five thirty nine uh, B C. Uh, Jerusalem is destroyed in about five eighty seven or so uh, by the Babylonians. And the, uh, the Babylonians are conquered by the Medo-Persian Empire and the, uh, it's, it's also called the Achaemenid Empire. Uh, and, and you can read about the Medo-Persian Empire the, the, in uh, Herodotus. Uh, was an ancient Greek historian, and he writes about the wars between the Greeks and the Persians. Uh, the, and so, so uh, but the, the Persian, imp the Persians conquer Babylon, and that's the time of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther when the temple is being rebuilt. Um, and and Esther is uh, a, a Jewish, a girl, orphan girl who becomes uh, a queen in uh, the Persian Empire. Okay, so that, that brings us up to 334 BC. So that was just a broad, a quick, broad overview of this time period. Uh, and and the, the Bible is, is going to, uh, so, so as we go through, I, I want you to kind of see, see, see the over, well, this was the overall picture. Now we're gonna look through the books in detail. Okay, there's a quiz. Hey, th this quiz, it's best for you to take uh, I, I'm going to, you, you could pause the video because you're all watching this on the video. So, so push pause. And then once you pause the video, uh, the, the near pod, I should have introduced this at the beginning of the video. Um, the, the near pod, uh, you can then t take this self-paced near pod quiz and just see if you were following what I've said in the lecture up to this point in time. Um, so follow you can follow along in your pod while you're watching this video that's a good idea to do that okay we're going to talk about the book of joshua uh so this uh, joshua is you know, we already encountered joshua he was uh in the book of numbers and deuteronomy both tell of when moses lays hands on Joshua, but the, the Lord tells Moses to do so in, uh, and in, in the spirit that was in, in Moses that, that, that is on Joshua, the Lord's with Joshua, and Joshua is the one who's going to lead the people into the promised land. Moses isn't allowed to enter the promised land, but Joshua and Caleb are the two that, that are allowed to enter the promised land. So Joshua uh, is the next uh, leader replacing Moses. And, uh, and so the book of Joshua overall is about the Israel entering the promised land by uh, by their obedience. So it's the obedience to the Lord. The, the, the end of Deuteronomy had the, those blessings if you obey, curses if you disobey. Uh, so in Joshua we see by, by their obedience, when they obey, they're successful and they enter the promised land and they conquer it. But when, when they disobey, uh, that's when the, when they're not successful, um, and so you'll see that in several of the stories. So Joshua, this word uh, Yahashua, it means God saves. Uh, that God God's the savior. Uh, now, so actually, the so the the word Joshua is uh, similar in the root. Uh, so the Jesus, the Greek word is uh, Jesus, but it's deriving from the Hebrew name that of Yeshua, so so the word Jesus means saves. Also, that God saves. Uh, so so Jesus is a uh, and, and Joshua is coming from the same root word. Uh, and, and so Joshua is giving us the historical record of Israel's 
uh, entry into and conquest of Canaan. Uh, so the, the, the dates are, so when this happens is just right after the Exodus, uh, the next generation. Uh, and so, so it's either in the 1400 BC or 1200 BC, depending on which date of the, the Exodus. Uh, there's two different theories. There is one of those. Uh, but, but I don't know which. A, uh, I think the big theme of the book of Joshua is that Israel's success in conquering the land is dependent on are the, their obedience to Yahweh, uh, their obedience to the Lord. Are they relying on the Lord and obeying him? They, they don't conquer the land by their own strength or by their military might. They're conquering only by their that the Lord is leading them. Uh, they, they conquer by obeying uh, Yahweh. Uh, so the, the very last chapter of the book of Joshua reveals the purpose of the book and uh, the context of, of Israel's history. And so th this is a book, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll go ahead and turn to it. <clears throat> I don't know if it's a good practice to always read the end of the book first, but let's do that in this case. Uh, so Joshua 24 verses 19 through 22 says but joshua told the people uh you will not be able to worship the lord now uh, say that again what he said but joshua told the people you will not be able to worship the lord because he is a holy god he is a jealous god he will not forgive your transgressions and sins if you abandon the lord and you worship foreign gods he will turn against you harm you completely destroy you and after he has been good to you well, no, the people say to Joshua, we, we won't do that. We will worship the Lord. And then Joshua says to the people, oh, well, you are witnesses against yourselves, that you yourselves, you've chosen to worship the Lord. And they say, we are witnesses. And Joshua says, so then get rid of all the foreign gods that are among you. Turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. So the people said to Joshua, we will worship the Lord, our God, and we will obey him. And so then that day, Joshua makes a covenant and establishes a, a statute and ordinance for them. And he recorded these things in the book of the law. So, so Joshua writes them down. But here we see that in the very last section of Joshua, I, I think we see the, the purpose of the book. Joshua is saying, uh, if it, uh, you, you have a choice. You obey the Lord or, or, you, or you disobey. And so and this is at the end. They've entered the land and, and Joshua saying, so obey the Lord. And, but then he tells them, but you won't be able to. Uh, you're, going to you're going to turn to idols and then he's going to bring judgment against you. And the people say, no, 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 we will worship the Lord. We will worship him. Um, but what we're going to find in the rest of the historical books is they do exactly what Joshua said they would basically, or they don't do exactly what Joshua said they wouldn't do. And that is that they don't honor the Lord. They do turn to idols. Um, and and so, so the book of Joshua, I think, while it's about the conquest, it, it is about the conquest of the of Palestine. Uh, so the God is leading his people into the, to conquer the, the, the Canaanite, uh, and, and they th drive out all, all the different peoples, and they take and settle in the land. But also it's a warning to the people that, that, that is saying, if you forget and you turn to idols, uh, then there's going to be a judgment against you also. Um, okay, but overall, I, I made it sound really negative there. It, it ends negative, uh, but the uh, many of the stories of Joshua are about Israel's uh, faithfulness and, and obedience, and, and that's how they entered the land. Uh, the first chapter uh, then it t tells about uh, the, the death of Moses uh, and, and the choosing of Joshua. So uh, chapter 1, verse 1, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you and all the people prepare to cross over the Jordan, the Jordan River, uh, to the land that I'm giving the Israelites. I'll give, I've given you every place where the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised Moses. Uh, so now uh, God's saying, I, I'm going to keep the promise that I made to Moses. You can enter the promised land. Wherever you walk, that land is yours. Uh, so 
uh, you're, as you go into this land, the land of the Hittites, and all, no one will be able to stand against you. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you. I will not abandon you. Um, th 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 those are important statements. Actually, when uh, Jesus in the New Testament, when he gives the Great Commission at the end uh, of Matthew, and he ends with the words, I and I will be with you to the end of the age. I, I hear the, the, that uh, the, the echoes of God's promise to Joshua as, as we enter the land, did you, do we, that there's a uh, God's promising Joshua, I will be with you. You're not doing this alone. And so, so he says, be strong, be courageous. Don't be afraid. Uh, you will take the land. Uh, you will be above all, be very strong, be very courageous uh, and observe carefully the whole instruction. Uh, that word observe in the English, uh, he's not saying observe like look at things. It means to keep the commandments. Or like keep doesn't mean to hold on to something. It means you obey. Uh, so observe here means to obey. It means to, to obey carefully the whole instruction my servant Moses has commanded you. Don't turn to the right from don't turn don't turn to the right or to the left, uh, but stay on this uh, s s stay on the straight path. This book of instruction. The book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You, you must meditate on it day and night so you may carefully observe everything written in it. So this command to be strong and courageous, it's, it's, it's connected with obeying the law. It's, it's not be strong and courageous and defeat the people. He says, be strong and courageous and keep all the commandments that I gave to Moses. Uh, the the courageous person is not, not the person who's willing to break all the commandments. Uh, it takes courage to keep these commandments. And, and God's saying, and I will be with you, and then you, you will, will prosper and succeed. Uh, so, so I've commanded you, be strong and courageous. Uh, don't be afraid and discouraged. Uh, so, so then Joshua uh, goes uh, and, and, start, and prepares the people. Uh, for, to go into uh, the, the promised land. Um, and in, in chapter, uh, well, well there, there's a couple different ways that Joshua is portrayed as being like Moses. Um, and so so in, in chapter one, it actually says, God will be with him like I was with Moses. <coughs> but then uh, it, it's, it's not until chapter five or six. No, it's chapter three, sorry. Chapter three. Uh, jo Joshua leads the people across the Jordan River, and when they cross the Jordan River, the water parts, uh, and, and God, the the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the the priests step step into the uh, Jordan River carrying the Ark, and as soon as they step in, uh, the the Jordan River uh, the stops flowing, and, and they're able to cross on dry land. That's just like Moses crossing the Red Sea. It's God saying, "I'm with you, Joshua, like I was with Moses," and then. As they're getting ready to uh, come up to, to, to the city of Jericho, uh, J Joshua meets, uh, th th there's a man standing there uh, with a drawn sword in his hand. And, and, and Joshua says, who, who are you with us or for our enemies? And he hears the man say, neither, uh, but I am the commander of the Lord's army. And then uh, the, the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, remove the sandals from your feet. The place where you're standing is holy. That's the exact words that God used with Moses at the burning bush. Take, take the shoes off your feet because where you're standing is holy. So, so I think that's another kind of phrase that's coming out like Joshua meets with the Lord. Here it's a, 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 there, there's a, a soldier standing there that he meets with rather than a burning bush like Moses did. But in both cases, this is the presence of the Lord. So take your, your sandals off. Uh, so Joshua's uh, portrayed as someone who's the next Moses, like Moses. Um, okay, well, well, back to chapter two, we got this story of, uh, the, uh, the, 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 of spies being sent into the, uh, the land. And, and just across the Jordan River, the first big city, that was there. There was a fortified city with a huge wall around it. it was the city of Jericho. It was going to be a, a, a difficult battle that they were going to have to fight. So Joshua sends some uh, people, uh, two men, as uh, so. So they're they're while they're in the Acacia Grove. If you remember what that uh, <coughs> word was, uh, so they're in that place, and then uh, the Lord 
or, or Joshua tells them, go, go scout out the land, especially Jericho. Um, so these two men, they go uh, to uh, Jericho. And when they go in there, the first place they go is uh, the prostitute's house. So they go into a house of prostitution. I think that tells you something about the kind of guys the Israelites were. Um, and they stayed with this woman named Rahab, um, the, the prostitute there. So Rahab was a prostitute uh, with, within the, the enemy city uh, who welcomes the, these men in. Uh, well, the king of Jericho hears, well, hey, the Israelites have sent some people here. Go find them. Or well, maybe they went to the house of, of Rahab. So they're, they're not the king's men are coming to knock on doors looking for these spies and uh so this they knock on rahab's door and they say hey bring out the men that that just came in and entered your house uh they're they're here to investigate the whole land we want to get them but the woman she had uh taken them the two spies uh, up and and hidden them uh so she, and then she tells them she says oh they they did came they they were here but they just left they just went down that way so you said run run uh, run that way. Maybe you can catch them. And so, uh, so, so the, the men chased them out, uh, pursued them along the roads. To, uh, but the spies were still there hiding in Rahab's place. And so then, uh, Rahab has a conversation with them. Uh, and, uh, and, and she, Rahab tells the, these men, says, you know, I know that the Lord, the, the Yahweh has given, the, given our whole land uh, over to you. I heard what had been done with King Sihon and King Og, the Amorites kings, you've destroyed all of them. Uh, you know, everybody here, we're all really afraid because we know God's giving you this into your hands. Um, so when you come into the land and you take this city, please swear to me by, that you'll be kind to my family uh, and you'll spare our lives uh, of, of my father and brother and sisters and brothers. Uh, and, and the, so then the two spies, they tell Rahab, uh, yes, they say, yes, we, uh, we will give our lives for yours. Uh, just don't tell us about, don't go tell the, uh, don't, don't report on us, but then we will show kindness and faithfulness when the Lord gives us the land. So then she lets them out, uh, down by a, a rope through the window and, uh, d- d- helps helps them to sneak out and the men then say to her they say so when we come into the land tie this red scarlet uh rope out the window or scarlet cloth hanging out out through the window uh and bring all of your family into the house here uh because it, it, it but and then when when we come we'll see that red scarf and uh anyone in in your house will be innocent uh, but if you're not in the house, if you're in any other house or any of your family leaves, well, we can't guarantee uh, anything. Um, and so Rahab said, let it be as you say. And so she sent them away. And after they left, she tied the scarlet cord to the window. Now think about this, the meaning here of this scarlet cord. Why a red cord? When Moses led the people out of Egypt, the last plague of the Passover... Uh, they sacrificed the lamb and put the blood of a, the lamb over their doorpost. Uh, so covering covering the door uh, it had the, the red blood covering. Uh, so now, now Rahab, uh, and, and, and that protected them. So when death came into the house, that, that, the, it, that house would be saved. Well, Rahab is given the same instruction. Uh, when, when the judgment comes, you ha- hang out this red cord over it and when we see the red uh the the cord then then judgment will not come on your house this is actually this is the pattern that god gives throughout scripture though rahab's not an israelite rahab's a prostitute uh, yet uh, god is saying you say saying when my people come in you can you uh, judge and judgment is coming onto every Every one of the the Canaanite, because of their idolatry, they're going to be destroyed. Um, Do you remember back in Deuteronomy, it said, 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 uh, when when you go into the land, remember, you're not destroying it because of your righteousness. It's because of their wickedness. So it's because of the wickedness of the people of Jericho and the idolatry that they're being destroyed. But Rahab is not destroyed. 
uh, because she had she welcomed the spies into her home but then as she hangs this red cord out of her 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 house it's like putting the blood of the lamb over her her doorpost and it's the way god acts with as judgment is coming he provides a way of salvation uh, and so as uh, christians we can see that it's it, how how are those who are excluded and outside and prostitutes and Canaanites and idolaters and uh, and we deserve God's judgment but how do we escape it it's just like Rahab uh, that, that it was, and it's just like the Passover it's the blood of the lamb the blood of Jesus that's going to cover us uh, not, not our salvation what's interesting so <clears throat> to skip ahead so when when Jericho you, you know the story of Jericho already to some degree I think but the walls fall down it's not that Israel knocks them down it's that God knocks them down but Rahab's house still stands uh, so so God is the one who saves uh, Rahab um, okay well let's see the so that was the spies of Rahab it, in in chapter three, then the Joshua uh, takes the people across the Jordan River, the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, that go that goes first, um, and the 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 Lord tells Joshua, "I'm going to begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel. They will know that I will be with you, just as I was with Moses." And so. Uh, the Lord leads them to cross the Jordan River, uh, but kind of parting the river like he parted the sea. And then the, the, the they take, uh, once they've crossed the river in chapter 4, they set up uh, an, a m memorial stones to remind them. And it says, so, so your children, when it says, it says, put 12 stones, have one of each of the tribes uh, put, put a stone here. Um, and then when your children ask you, what are these stones here mean? Uh, you're to tell them, well, when we, we were cut off, we were on the other side of the Jordan, but God opened up the Jordan River so we could cross across on, on dry land. And the stones were to be a memorial for that. I think there we have the purpose of history, uh, that history is remembering, remembering what God has done, uh, that, that we should do that, I, I think, in, in our lives. Um, because other, it's easy to forget and actually, I think the author of these books is saying, ah, don't forget, but we did forget. Um, so, <clears throat> let's see, the, the commander of the Lord's army, that's the next one. So, so Joshua comes up, uh, he, he, he sees a man who has a drawn sword, and he says, who are you? Who are you? Are you for us or for our enemies? And, and this man he's seeing is the commander of the Lord's army. But what does the man say? Does he say he's with Israel? No. Does he say he's with the enemies? No. He says, I'm neither. I'm not, not with you or for your enemies. I'm the commander of the Lord's army. I think that's a really important statement because God is not on one side but against the other side. It's not that God is with Israel and against the nations. God wants to be glorified among all nations. And so uh, in the book of Joshua, we're going to see God uses Israel and Joshua uh, to bring judgment on the Canaanites. Uh, but later, we're going to see God using Babylon uh, and Assyria to bring judgment on the Israelites uh, in a similar way. Uh, it, it's not that God favors one nation or over another. Uh, he's going to bring judgment on all nations for our wickedness and our, our idolatry. But he also has provided a means of salvation, just like he did for Rahab uh, and, just, and, as he, and, and Joshua. Because the name Joshua means is pointing for us towards Jesus, the one who's leading us into that salvation. Um Okay, well, well, so then God gives uh, <clears throat> then instructions to uh, to Joshua that when when you go to Jericho, uh, you're to to march around the city uh, s six times, um, and uh, for, for, or one time for six days, and then the se seventh day march around it seven times, and then blow your trumpets and shout out loud and. Uh, and when you're shouting and, and, and take the Ark of the Covenant with you on all of that. 
Um, and then you'll see I, the, the city will be yours. So it's a little kind of a strange battle plan. It's not a, a top military strategy to say, I'm going to, um, like, like people don't study this as, hey, this, some people try to do weird stuff like this and try to like find military strategies from the Bible. That's just plain weird, I think. Uh, the, 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 point, the point of this is it wasn't a military strategy, uh, but it was showing honor to the Lord. They were showing obedience to the Lord by uh, that the, they uh, in wa walking around uh, seven times on the seventh day. It connects to the, the creation pattern there too, but and to the in in the law there is the uh, the 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 seventh day was to be a, a Sabbath, and every seven years there's to be a Sabbath year, uh, and then and then and then in the every seven times seven uh so in the 49th year then the next year is to be a, a bigger year the year of jubilee um so so was, uh, you see that same pattern in, in the the marching that's why they do seven times and then they sh shout uh and and the and the walls fall down and it happens just they, so they obey god they do it this way and the walls of jericho fall down every place except Rahab's house where her house was the wall didn't fall down and God saved Rahab uh, but everybody the the, the, the uh, Joshua is uh, successful um, but you know, the instructions were everything was to be devoted to the Lord and that means everything was to be destroyed they weren't to keep anything back for themselves uh, and uh, so so one of the well, let's see. Well, it says, so chapter 6, verse 27. So the, the Lord was with Joshua. His fame spread throughout the land. Um, but then chapter 7. The Israelites, however, were unfaithful regarding things set apart for destruction. There was a man named Achan. Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah. So he took some of that which was set apart, some some that was to be devoted to, to the Lord and destroyed, and he kept some of that. And and, and he he uh, he hid it and buried it in his tent. Um, he decided to keep that. Uh, so he disobeyed uh, the Lord. And so as the Israelites then come to... Uh, the, 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 so the, so they've conquered this big city with this big wall and a big army, but it was Jericho was destroyed just by obedience and walking around, uh, marching around the city and, and shouting to the Lord. Uh, God gives gives them the city, um, but then Achan doesn't obey the Lord. So one of the soldiers takes some of the devoted things and keeps them for himself. Um, in an act of rebellion against uh, the Lord's commandment. And uh, so then the army, is, 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 the, the, the next city is, is a little city called Ai. A-I. Uh, the, the little city of Ai. It, it, ha it was small. There weren't a lot of people there. And so uh, the, Joshua's uh, doesn't even need to send his whole army there. They were just going to say, hey, the next city is this little one. We don't even have to worry about it. We just send a few men and it's going to be fine. Uh, so uh, jo they, they send some men to Ai, uh, but this, this little city completely defeats uh, Israel's army, and they uh, and the Israelites have to retreat and run, uh, run away. So they're defeated at I, but why are they defeated? They're defeated is because they had disobeyed, uh, and so uh, the Lord reveals to Joshua it's because one of you disobeyed. Uh, so so oh, well, who is this? And so they uh, get have everybody stand out. Uh, and, and they separate them according to their tribes. And then they turn, okay, the, the person who did this is of the tribe of Judah. Okay, and so the family of so-and-so. And, -so. and finally gets down, okay, it's Achan's family. Achan's the one. And so it said, Achan, are you the one who did this? And Achan's brought forward and, and, and he, he confesses uh, that, that he did. And they, they've, he says, it's true. I sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I did when I saw the 
spoils of a beautiful cloak from Babylon, five pounds of silver and a bar of gold weighing a pound and a quarter. I coveted them and I took them. So he broke the commandment of coveting. Uh, he, it was idolatrous because he was keeping what was to be devoted to the Lord. Uh, and he said, you can go see them yourselves. They're in the, the they're concealed uh, uh, in the ground inside my tent. And so Joshua, they go find it. And so then Achan and his whole family are brought out and are are uh, stoned, meaning they, they had stones thrown at them until they died. And so Achan and his family are killed and put under the tent or are or, 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 or buried. And they even give the name, it's called the Valley of Achor um, because of Achan's sin. Uh, so what's the difference here? between Jericho and I. Uh, the success at Jericho is because they obeyed God's orders uh, completely. But at I, they fail because uh, they one of them had disobeyed uh, God's order. So, so it's showing that different when you rebel and don't, don't keep my word, uh, then even a little nation is going to give you trouble. Uh, but, but when you obey, then the, the, even a big fortified city their walls will fall to you. And and think about like how the difference between Achan and Rahab. Achan was an Israelite soldier. He was a he, he was in the line he was from the tribe of Judah. Uh, and yet he was uh, destroyed because of his his disobedience and he he was uh, judgment was brought on him uh, just he was devoted to the Lord. Uh, I mean, just like all the Canaanites were to be devoted to the Lord, be, they were to be destroyed. Uh, Achan is destroyed because of his his rebellion. Um, but Rahab, Rahab, in one of these the, from Jericho, a prostitute, and yet ha, is she destroyed with the Canaanites? No, she's not. Uh, that she is, is saved and counted as one of God's people uh, because. Uh, because she puts her faith in the God of Israel. And actually Rahab is then, uh, in, in reading the, the genealogies uh, of, of Jesus in the New Testament, is uh, w- one of those uh, listed um, as a great-grandmother, great-great-great-great-grandmother. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so that... That's an important, I, and I think the author is wanting us to contrast. See, it's, it, it's not just the Israelites that are saved. Uh, Rahab is a Canaanite prostitute who's saved. Um, so when Israel disobeys, they're going to face judgment. Uh, but when the Canaanites turn from their idolatry, uh, they'll be saved also. Okay, so I want you to be able, what is the central theme in Joshua? I want you to be able to state that in your own words. Go ahead and take a moment to write it down. You could pause the video and then and do it in your pod. Uh, but it's basically, no, I'm not going to say it. You have to rewind. I said it earlier. Okay, let's finish off. Uh, we've got five more minutes of class. Five more minutes and then you're done. Uh, so uh, the, the main events in Joshua, so we got up to chapter 8. Um, or, or seven. So, so after after the sin of Achan, then the, and they've d- destroyed Achan. Uh, then they dis- then God gives them victory over I, and 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 then He gives him uh, <coughs> basically Joshua. Then tells uh, the, the story of of how they are successful in defeating uh, the the different peoples. Um, in the Canaanites uh, and throwing them out and generally successful from there on out. Um, Let's see, chapter 8, verse 33 through 35. Uh, So at that time, so so Joshua builds an altar on Mount Ebal to the Lord, uh, just just as Moses, the Lord's servant, had commanded the Israelites. Uh, And he built it according to what's written in the book of the law of Moses. So in the time of Joshua, they already have the Torah, the law of Moses. Uh, And uh, so they build this altar with uncut stones. So it's not like the altars of the Canaanites. And 
<coughs> and on the stones, Joshua then copied the law of Moses. So Joshua wrote the law of Moses. That's important. Uh, and then uh, uh, he says, all Israel, resident aliens and citizens alike, even those who are not Israelites, but who are joined with us, kind of like Rahab, everybody, there's to stand there around the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. <coughs> and and they, they stood there and then Joshua reads aloud all the words of the law, the blessings as well as the curses. And that was there in Deuteronomy. It says there was not a word of all Moses had commanded Joshua that was not read before the entire assembly of Israel, including the women. Uh, so, so everybody uh, heard it, the, the, the children, the dependents, and the resident aliens who lived among them. So everybody hears the reading of, of the law. Um, <coughs> in chapter 9, uh, we, we have another fa fa failure. The, the Gibeonites were uh, a people who lived in that area, and they knew that, that Joshua and the Israelites were destroying all the idolatrous people and the Canaanites there. And so the Gibeonites, they were pretty clever. And they said, uh, well, the, the, they put together kind of a, a, a con job, uh, you know, a, a, a scheme to deceive Joshua. And they dressed in their traveling clothes. Uh, they, they put on like shoes that that were worn and had holes in them and they they got their old canteens and emptied them out and they made they, they dressed themselves up like they'd been traveling and walking a long ways and then they they get up to joshua and they say oh uh we we've heard that you're uh in the area and you're conquering all the peoples of this area but we just want you to know we're we're not from around here so so don't so please don't destroy us uh because we're not from here uh we're, we're traveling through and so they, uh, <clears throat> they asked to, to, for a treaty to be made. Uh, and it says Joshua and the men, they did not inquire of the Lord, but they, they accepted and entered into this treaty uh, with, with the, the Gibeonites. Um, and so they allow the Gibeonites to be their servants, uh, but... Uh, they they don't completely dis destroy them. Um, eventually, then they discover though that the the pe pe that they did live in the area, um, but they'd already sworn uh, the the oath to them, and so they they couldn't go back on that. Um, but so so this is showing you know kind of explaining in in the period of Joshua they they're to they were to destroy all the peoples of the land, but uh, but they don't. And, and the Gibeonites is one which, which they don't because, well, they failed to inquire of the Lord. Uh, there, there's a few more things that happen. It tells a few more battles, but in chapters 10 and 11, uh, it gives just an overview of conquering to the, 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 the southern cities first. So it conquers the southern part of the land. And then Joshua goes through and conquers the northern part of the land. Uh, and uh, the, the land is, is conquered by uh, Israel. And then uh, chapters 12 through 21, a fairly long section, uh, describes how the land is divided between the 12 tribes and uh, listing where the, the, in, which, which tribe inherits which land. Um, and, and so that's pretty much the book of Joshua. Uh, but I think that's a good spot to end. Uh, hopefully on Friday I can be back in class uh, with you, but we'll, we'll end the video here and uh, get ready to move from Joshua and then into Judges Friday.